Good morning. It's Saturday after Thanksgiving and it's a beautiful day outside and I thought today I would give you guys an update. We had a little bit of flooding last night and how we're managing water right now and um, I also took Daisy to get her horn trimmed. Hi Hank. And so I thought I'd show you how that went. It's been raining for about like three days. And I don't know about you guys, we have had the wettest fall and honestly summer. It has been flooded. I think this is the third or fourth time the farm just has flooded. Um, the boys. I say the boys. And when I say that usually Something on my father-in-law's windshield. My father-in-law and my husband, the men, I guess, the men, are about to pump water out from underneath my house again. It's awesome. Uh, oh gosh, poor piggy. There you go. So you can see, so this is the pig pen. I have these pigs in this pasture all last winter. Their house is dry, it's insulated plastic, so it's fine. Like, poor guys. I mean, they're pigs, they don't really care, but still, there's like nowhere even to feed them that they don't have to stand in water. Thankfully we have this little bit of a crest up here to keep the shop out of water. But yeah, I mean, This is all between the barns, full of water. It's just water, water everywhere. Our house, we've been talking about trying to fix this. Since we're selling the property, we kind of go back and forth about what exactly we're gonna do. We're kind of in a hole, is the problem is our neighbors over here and over here and along the back side, their property is all higher than ours, so water just kind of sits. So you can see water, water, more water. Okay, I'm coming. I know. These poor guys. This is all flooded, but it does look like for the most part they stay dry, which is the goal. With the help of our trusty gate, they're hungry. It's like almost. And the they've been locked up and I'm sure they're ready to get out. So yeah, we've been fighting. Thankfully it's gonna be beautiful for the next week, but geez, it's just a little. are fed. We're 
gonna go feed the boys. And I'll show you a little bit of how it's flooded over there. And it's gonna be flooded even more when the boys pump all the water out. This water is probably deepest point, which is really not terrible. Um, it is so hot. I'm sweating. Their barn stayed really dry though, so I'm really pleased. Hi, Zelly. Normally, like, we get a wet spot right here because that water seeps underneath the table, but I've built this up with some poop and dirt. And so it's a little wet here and it's a little wet in the back of this stall. But other than that, it's pretty dry. It stinks pretty bad in here. They've been locked up in here for a couple of days, so. But you can see what we did was we dug a trench here and it's kind of gotten covered up, but it still works to drain the water out that direction to the pig pen, which now the pig pen's flooded. As you can see, there's just standing water, more standing water, more standing water. It's awesome. I'm hoping these guys will at least get out. I've got a little, this board that they can kind of walk over. They can come out this way and around and not step in a puddle, which they won't do usually, will you? Because you're dramatic. Yes, you are. It's really bad for their feet to stand in water, so. Um, I have quit, just a sh little short update, filling up their hay feeders twice a day. They get filled up once. Today I'm not gonna fill them up this morning because I want them to get out and eat something because they're going through hay so fast. And we still have some fescue that they can eat, so. Hi. I know. But mostly I just want them to get out. They're eating sometimes just like constantly because they're bored, which is not economical at this point. Hello, Hank the cat. Hi, buddy. You figured out how to stay dry? So, go feed the other boys and I'll show you the water in their pasture. Hi, Twizzer. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you guys was that Daisy got her horn trimmed. I don't know if you had noticed, but it was starting to grow like really close to her eye. Come here, Daisy. I can't see you. Daisy! Um she it grew normally but she got in a headbutting match with somebody not nani nani just happens to be sitting there it was probably pixie or twizzy or zelly and broke it but didn't break it all the way off so it bled and what i think happened was when it bent down the nerve got pinched and the blood vessel which was good and it cut off the blood supply so normally the so here's where they cut it off nice and clean. It didn't bleed at all. So I think what happens, you can kind of see this crack. He cut right there and I think it kind of, it had pinched off the blood vessel and the nerves that ran in the bottom part of her horn, but it had grown to where it was like right here next to her eyeball. So it had to get it cut off, didn't we? There's no horns in our eyeballs. So, Normally it would have bled and it was really funny. We went in and the vet was like, do you want to cut at the base of her skull down? Cause the horn is like way down close to her head. And I was like, I really don't care about the horn. She's not super aggressive. I just want it to not grow into her eyeball. And he was very thankful. So he cut it after the break and he was super excited that it didn't bleed and he didn't have to carterize it. And she didn't even yell and scream. She was such a brave girl. Weren't you? If you follow me on Instagram, um, I st it saved in my stories, our little trip. I couldn't really film it. It's raining. Um, our large animal vet is a walk-in clinic. So we had to wait 
an hour probably to get her in, but I was really excited that it went so smoothly and now I don't have to worry about that. And I'm really sad that no one is getting out when it's beautiful today. Poppy. Me bumpers. You had some water. I'll get out here. I thought I would show you guys how I transported her. If you go to my Instagram, which I'll link below, and you watch those stories, you can kind of see how that worked. But I'll give you a little quick um, kind of synopsis on how I did that. We have a 2000 Explorer that we use as a farm truck, and that's generally speaking how I transport my goats. So I took this a tarp, so this tarp right here, and just folded it up for her to stand on in case she peed, which she did. Goats, um, baby goats usually won't pee or poop if you hold them, but Daisy weighs 140 pounds, so it's not really an option to drive and, ho and hold Daisy in my lap. Um, oh, he put it back. So we basically use this truck to transport animals to the vet when we pick up animals when we buy them it's four-wheel drive and we bought it initially because we at least some land for our cows and we used it to drive around because it was pretty hilly um so yeah i just put her in the back and here hi piggles mom doesn't have any more food for you desperately need to clean out the fridge for them but yeah so in here Basically, I just put the tarp in here and loaded her up. And I'll see if I can pull those videos off Instagram and stick in and you can kind of see. But yeah, that's generally for Daisy. She's a full-size goat. That's how we transport her. And I don't put her in a kennel or anything. Just stick her in the back with tarp. Um, pretty much covers the poop and the pee. We transported the pigs in the back of this um, when we bought them the um, male pigs. See all the flooding? It's kind of gone down a little bit. You can see our neighbor has water. Pond kind of overflows. Jeremy said it was even flooded out there this morning. So yeah, this has been our life for the last, I feel like months and months of just, it's not just raining here, it's three or four inches of rain every time. It's exhausting, isn't it, buddy? This poor guy has to stay in the barn. It's just ridiculous. It has been the wettest winter, hasn't it, bud? That's a good dog. Good boy. All right. Oh, hi, shrub. Uh, so yeah. Frustrating, but that generally is how um, I transport goats. In the last year, probably uh, the Explorer has had some issues. It's old, and um, it's just taking some time to fix them. And so, if I don't take the Explorer because the battery's dead or whatever else, I actually can transport those nine Gs. The Nigerian dwarfs, the smaller goats in my car, and I just put them in a dog kennel. And I, it's harder to get them to go into a dog kennel. Oh, it's wet in here. Surprise, surprise. Let's see, this is old dog kennel that my in-laws gave us, and two of them will fit in there, which is kind of amazing. And that fits in the back of my little Avalon. So it will fit in the back seat. So that makes transporting them easy. So if you don't have a farm truck that you don't mind transporting a goat in and you have Nigerians, that's an option. We have a trailer, never used it to transport goats. We did take the pig to the processor. Um, and that. Oh, 
Did you guys finally find breakfast? But yeah, so you can see how flooded this is right now and we're making it worse. Because that's water being pumped out of my house right now. Which is great. I don't know, I've showed you guys this before, but crawl space, sump pump, water hose. That'll go for a few hours, I'm sure. Oh, man. We are done with breeding seasons. I'm not feeding these guys as much. I'm actually just feeding them some range cubes now. He is still rutted up. He actually busted his nose the other day. Looks like it's healing up pretty good. Hi, sweet girl. Did you go eat some cubes? You're stinky. You let that boy rub all over you. I love her. She's so good. Oh, gobble gobbles. Um, but yeah, breeding season is over. I'm really excited. Um, Pixie was our last one to breed, and we bred her last Saturday before we went on our little trip. And here in about a month, these guys will be. already has calmed down quite a bit, but he'll calm down a little bit too. Hopefully, for this girl's sake. Um yeah we're done so we'll start having babies I'm really excited to do videos when we start having goat babies because I think you guys will love that and that will be end of February 1st of March you can see all this water it just never ends their house stays pretty dry because they built up so much manure in there so it's gross, but it's something. I think that's Tink that's yelling. No, it's Padme. Um, but we did decide not to breed Poppy. So, CC, I think going in order, it's going to be Twiz, Bunny, Nani, CC, Zelda, and Pixie. So six girls, so probably at least 12 babies, which is really exciting. And they're all due from the end of February 1st week in March until the um, middle of April. So I'm really excited. I love kitty season. Sort of a love-hate relationship because it's busy and it can be a little intense working, trying to watch them. The wireless camera in the barn helps. Um, just to make sure it can go smoothly. Pixie's my only one that I'll have really any concerns about just because this is her second time to kid and her first time didn't go very well. So we didn't read her last year. She's much bigger this time so I think it's going to help. And that kind of helps me make the decision with Poppy not to breed her this year and give her one more year. She's very small. Padme's almost as big as she is. And Padme's only, she's born in March, so she's less than a year old. But weight-wise, they're about the same. Just don't want to take any chances. Um, she's going to be, it'll be a mixed breed goat. We won't be able to, it'll be hard to sell. Um, we won't be keeping any of them. So, just not in a big hurry to breed her. We did not breed Daisy. Daisy didn't go into heat at all that I could tell. Um, so that means what I would need to do is put her in with the buck for about a month and see if he would bring her into heat and breed her. Again, we don't have a Nubian buck, so those would be mini Nubians. And they're just harder to sell and I probably wouldn't keep any of them. Daisy is so fickle with her health. Just kind of decided, it just became more work and I just decided against it. Like honestly, having to sell probably between 12 and 15 babies will be enough and we will probably not keep anything this year. I don't have any more room, to be honest. Like we are at capacity, so I would have to get rid of 
some of my older girls. Um, so probably like Pixie and Daisy and Poppy to keep any new babies and have room for them, especially since we're keeping Tink this year and I didn't anticipate keeping anybody but Padme. And old Tinker the Stinker kind of threw a wrench in my plans, but she's so, she's still so tiny. I mean, she's not 12 pounds and she's healthy. She's doing really great, but I just can't see selling her and not knowing that somebody would take good care of her. So maybe I'll turn her into therapy goat and take her to school. She'd probably move her out. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed a little update. It's not really a super exciting video. We're just having a lot of flooding. It's making it really hard to work on projects or do anything special. Um, just a couple of tips for transporting goats and how we're managing all the water. I think I'm going to do a video on Duke and Great Pyrenees and West Arp Guardians, I think, for my next video. So if you like the sound of that, leave me a comment and let me know. <laughs> I think you do. The boys are working on the gutter, so he's he wants to stay here with me because he's getting pets, but he's a little um, torn. He also has to go inspect what they're doing. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little notification bell so that you know every